So, I'm happy to welcome all you guys in the Audimax of the University of St. Gallen. Actually, this is not my first time being in the Audimax. I would love to show you a picture of me sitting in the Audimax around 11 years ago. This is <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who can relate to that. Please, ra wait, wait, wait. Please raise your hands if you ever... <laughs> Please raise your hands if you ever felt like this when it comes to the topic of learning. <laughs> Two people, no joking. Okay, so, all right. But let's start from scratch, okay? When I was a child, before school, I was a very active and curious child. I loved to discover life and figure out all the perspectives life could serve me. I always wanted to ask questions and know what this was and that was, and I was so, I was, I was looking for information. I was playing around and everything was new. Things started to change when I went to school. I wasn't very bad in school, but I had problems with concentration and um, catching up with the school topics. I was diagnosed with ADHD, and it was very difficult. I wonder who has the ADHD, uh, ADHD here too? Okay, interesting. I had problems with ADHD, problems with focusing, and school wasn't really mirroring how good I was. I wasn't able to get mirrored if, if I'm a, bad, a good student, a bad student, or if I'm good in life. So what happens is, as years passed, it got worse and worse. My marks got worse, I haven't got any friends, I got even bullied and became an outsider. And as you know, the topics of school get more difficult, so I couldn't catch up the more time went on. This is a picture of me when I was around, yeah, 12, 13, 14 years old. And yeah, as you see, many things changed. I started to get into emotional eating, I started to get really pushed aside and couldn't really catch on. My biggest wish was just to have friends, maybe have a girlfriend, just be part of something. I really missed that part to be good at school. I know this was over. I just wanted to be just part of something that's good. So what happens is if your school life, your career life is bad, your private life gets bad too. So I went backwards in life and things felt hopeless. I don't know who can relate to that, but I felt really, really stuck and I didn't know how to catch up especially when I saw other people in the same age getting successful or cool or having girlfriends or being invited to parties. But then something changed. I heard the cool guys been talking about that fighting sport, that new sport where everything was allowed and boxing went against wrestling and wrestling against jiu-jitsu and everything was mixed and combined. And I was hyper-focused. Why? Because I knew if I would be good at this sport, at this fighting style, I would be able to protect myself against the bullies and maybe become cooler and maybe have a girlfriend. <laughs> really. So, I searched for the best school and started a journey that changed my life. Now, almost 15 years later, I'm happy to be a best-selling author. I'm coaching people and companies in different topics like human psychology and others. I'm a black belt and head coach of my own gym training athletes in fighting, and I'm a guide in psychedelic ceremonies. But what exactly happened? What happened? Oh, you like psychedelics, right? <laughs> I knew that. So what exactly happened that I could not only become good at one topic of my life, but also become an expert in other topics of my life? I found a cheat code. I will share it to you. First of all, it was not fighting. It was the principles fighting had, the fighting system had, that changed my life. And you can find those principles in other systems too. Because life is full of systems, right? There are systems everywhere. Some of those systems are high effective when it comes to learning. Some, uh, some systems are low effective when it comes to learning. With that being said, school for me personally was a low effective system. I wasn't able to have learning progress. I wasn't able to achieve the results that that system could give. A high learning system, for me, for example, it was fighting, has high learning effects, and the cheat code is that you become better in other topics of life too, because the patterns of systems are very similar. So what differentiates or what makes the difference between a high effective system and a low effective system? Which system can change your life and which systems are hard to approach? Which systems that if you master them, will give you a pattern, analytic, and a skill set, a cheat code, to matter other low topics, what should they have? I call it the PHS principles. If there is a system that has those three elements included, 
you will have high learning effects and you will use that as a cheat code for other systems even if they are low in PHS. That's the reason why I was able to generalize the benefits. So let's start with the first one. What does P stand for? Playfully. It's very, very important that a system is playful. We learn through games because life is full of games, right? And playing is a way for us humans to gain information in this life. Like in AI, we collect information on a playful way. But what is necessary to be allowed to play or have fun in a game? You have to be allowed to fail. So if there is a system or a game that is low in its playfulness, then we as human beings have difficulties to approach them. For example, fighting was a playful way for me to approach that system. And after I approached fighting and saw that I was addicted to it and I didn't, I didn't want to stop that game, I realized that life was full of games. Negotiation and sales is a game. Seduction is a game. Entrepreneurship is a game. Life is full of games. So if you become good at one game, you can be better at other ones. If you're playing bad games in life, low systems, you feel stuck. So, what is very important or crucial when we talk about a playful away, a playful approach? You know a game has level ups, right? And same as in fighting or in different other games. You start as a beginner, as a white belt, and you play your way through the levels to eventually become a black belt. And a black belt is so interesting. A black belt is like a mentor, because you as a white belt or a blue belt or a purple belt or whatever the system, the, the game you're playing has, you can look up to that black belt and learn information from him because he played that game before. School wasn't like that for me. I always wished that school was like Dumbledore. You know, Dumbledore was like the black belt of witching or whatever that is in English, I don't know. He was witching and Harry Potter wanted to witch with him and he was the black belt and he was whatever. And this is what a system should have if you want to have high learning effects. The second one. Holistic, very important. Isn't it crazy? We go to school, we have to sit down and shut off like 80, 90% of our whole resources that are made for learning. If you watch children, younger people, they learn, absorb information with their whole body. This is all one intelligence. You cannot isolate that one or the cognitive linear thinking from the body part. And this is unfortunately what school was for me. I was only able to get one dimension of my resources. And so I didn't even know how intelligent I really could be. Because we learn to our whole body. We need our whole intelligence to gain information. So this is very, very crucial and very significant to know. If you think that you're not able to learn something, think of it again and think if it's only if you're only limited to your linear cognitive thinking. I'm sure many of you guys have struggles like I did when it comes to mind work or academic learning, but are very, very good in other topics where they can include the whole intelligence. I don't know which high game or which game it is, but for us as human beings, it's very, very, it's like needed to use all the instruments to gain information. And this is what a high effective system has. What's up? This is what a high effective system has. A high effective system is not only playful in, it, in its approach, it also got the opportunity for you to use all your resources to gain information. And when you ask me about the future of learning, it's very important that we can learn with all our abilities to learn. And as a human being, it's our whole body. Mind and body synchronized as one. Let's go to the last one. If a system is high in playful, in a playful way, in a holistic way, and when it comes to seriousness, we can have high learning effects. Let me get that straight. If I go, if I, when I went to fighting, you didn't need to tell me why I should block a hook. If I wouldn't block that hook, I would get knocked out. So the seriousness brought me to focus. So many older or low effective systems in life 
We don't take them for serious or real. I know that marks are hard and if you fail an exam, it's serious, but it's not really serious because it's not natural. A high learning system has realistic consequences that we learn from. Those consequences bring us in a situation to be hyper-focused. Imagine, let's go back a few thousand years to our ancestors. Let's play the game of hunting, okay? They went out, they went hunting, they watched for the footmarks and prints of the animal and they knew the weather was like this and this was like that and the animal was this so I know that the animal will be there. There was a game, it was a system, it was high in PHS because S, he could die every day. And death as a possible, uh, a possible thing in that game makes you hyper-focused because you know the consequences of tuning out. A high game knows that. A high game brings you in a situation, or you choose a game which had the situation, that you will take it deadly serious, or it doesn't have to be death all the time, you know why you're doing what you're doing. For me personally, school, I didn't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Maybe the rules or the reasons why I should do what I should do there have been right a few hundred years ago. I don't know, but the seriousness and realness wasn't there. So what happens? The people that approach that game without taking it serious, but still taking it serious, sound a little bit robotic. So if a system is high in P, high in H, and high in S, you will have high learning effects, and you can use that pattern, analytic, cheat code, whatever it's called, to, <laughs> to bring that to other systems in life and become a master in only one topic. It was crazy, I was addicted. After I started fighting, and I eventually became good at one thing, not a black belt after one year, but you start to become better, I started to see that I can be good at everything. Because I didn't question myself again, because I was able to see and learn myself better. Just give me, let me give you one example that's very significant. If you take two persons, with the exact same resources. And one of them is playing a high game in his life, a system that's high in pH and S constantly. And the second one is not. I can guarantee you, the first person will challenge, will face challenges way better than the second one. And he will become a master in other topics way easier than the second one. And that high system, that high game, doesn't need to be his career or his job. It just needs to be a system that is playing, that is high in playfulness, high in holistic, and highly serious. So I want to ask you guys, what is your game in life? What are your games in life? How do you portion your playtime? Because I tell you something that is, was really mind-blowing for me. If you are not playing a high game, you are still playing. Playing seems to be a big part of God's great musical. As I said, playing is everywhere. So if you're not playing a high game in life, you're stuck in some low games or toxic games. Feeling stuck means you're not growing. So if you feel stuck in life and feel that you haven't got mirrored how good you could be or should be, maybe you're playing the wrong games. You know what's deadly and toxic about low games? Low games got the problem that if you play them, you think you are playing something, but actually you're going backwards. Example for toxic games are social media, binge watching Netflix, eating um, or stalking your ex or whatever you do to <laughs> play something because you cannot not play. And this is the deadly part of it. If you don't have a high game, listen to that carefully, please. If you don't have a high game, I'm sure you're stuck in low games. So watch your playtime and choose wisely which decisions you take. Because there is playtime. Choose it and take high games. The best part for me personally about high games was I loved learning. I didn't know that learning could be attractive, honestly. I went and searched for information again. The last time I searched for information and was curious and asked questions was till school began. When school came, I lost connection to learning. School or 
learning institutes haven't been a friendly place for me. But after I played a high game, I did not only became good at the high game, I saw the patterns in every other game too. This is why I changed my direction and started to say, hey, I want to be good physically and teach. I want to become good mentally and teach. And I want to become good spirituality in spiritual contexts and teach. I was addicted to learning. Mindfulness is a big part of that. If you have a high game in life, you are hyper-focused. Because you cannot not focus. If you're not focusing in that system or game, it's not a high game. Because seriousness or playfulness or whatever there is isn't given. So choose your play times in life wisely. Whatever you do, taking your phone, scrolling through something, or whatever it is that pulls your attention, it's you playing a system. If you change that play time and invest it in a high system game, I personally would recommend you something that is also uh, have included fitness parts of it, so you can have your sport routine with it. You will grow, because growth means learning. A high game makes you grow, a low game makes you feel stuck. So, you want to become a master at something. You want to become a black belt. You want to master life. You want to be good. Let me give you a cheat code for that. Search for a game that is high in P, high in H, and high in S. It should be playfully. You should be able to collect information, fail, collect information, fail, collect information, stand up, ask your friends, what did I did wrong? Go again and level up. Have fun, but it should be serious. Sorry, holistic. You should include all your elements. You should be able to use all your elements. So please don't choose a game that is only using linear cognitive thinking. And last but not least, it should be serious. Because if you play a system or learn a system or play a game that is not serious or you will not take it serious, then it's like going into a fight and not taking it serious and getting knocked out. You will lose the fight and lose the game. But please check your ego. The root of all evil is attachment. And the high system knows that. If you go into a system or a game and you are too serious, you will also get knocked out and lose the game. So you have to combine all of those elements, have a playful approach, have a holistic approach, and be deadly serious and know what you're doing and why you're doing it to eventually get the knockout. Thank you, guys.